In the new beta version of Adobe After Effects 2020, we can finally taper strokes. Now this is a very long overdue feature, but I am very, very excited about it. And would I be as excited about being able to taper lines if I had left my house in over a month? Maybe so, maybe not. Let's get into it. And to install the new version of After Effects, the beta version, you're gonna open up your Creative Cloud window and go down to beta apps and then find After Effects beta version and install that. And apparently not everyone has the beta apps, but if you're special like me, then it'll just be right here and um, they'll start rolling this out for everyone. So maybe yours will pop up soon. And uh, this probably should be obvious, but the new features that are in the beta version are not gonna work in uh, older 2020 versions. So if you try to open up a beta file in the old 2020 version, the strokes are not gonna have tapers. They're just gonna look like uh, big fat lines. Okay, let's go. So the kind of standard process for doing a stroke right on effect was you have a text layer and then you would trace over it with the pen tool like this and then add a stroke effect like this. Stroke. Make this bigger. Apply all masks. And then let me just fix this in post real quick. You know, this still works. Um, it's still gonna work a lot of the time, but it has like it has some problems, right? When you're revealing, you know, you get stuff like this, and you gotta kinda adjust these around, but when things overlap. There's nothing you can really do about that. If you move this over, then you're gonna reveal the other side. You're only getting a single weight of the stroke all the way through. So if you have a really kind of variable weight font, I guess, um, there's not really much you can do about it. And you can't animate the font. Um, so there's a lot of limitations to doing it this way. So, you know, if, you, if you're just, if you have a pinch animation, you just gotta get it out the door. This, this is easy and it works. But now with tapered strokes, um, we can do a whole new approach. So instead of just drawing over top of a text layer and unmasking it, we can actually just use trim paths and draw strokes and we have a lot more flexibility. So let's see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and delete this mask. Delete the stroke. And let's let's do it. So I'm going to set this layer to like 25% opacity cuz this is just going to be a guide layer now. And I'll go ahead and lock this. What we want to do is grab our pen tool and with nothing selected, we're just going to start tracing our layer and this is going to create a new shape layer and we'll just start going over our path and I'm going to drag this under so that we can see our guide layer and I'm using um, I'm going to use butt capper here so all of these um, scripts and plugins I'm going to use are going to be in the description to easily just create caps so we can line things up here and we'll get these into place roughly. Okay, and then now I'll just unselect, but with the layer still selected, we can now draw the second part of this F and I'll get this roughly into place, whoopsie. Okay, that looks good. Let's name this F and let's open up this, prop, this layer properties. We'll do some housekeeping here. Name the top part F top. Name the bottom one F bottom. And let's see what we're working with. So for the F top, I don't think this one needs to be tapered. We'll just open up the stroke here. Maybe bring it down the stroke width down a little bit. 
line things up a little bit better. I mean, that's pretty good. Let's just skip down to the bottom and, and let's get into the taper. That's what we all came here for, right? Let's get into it. So now if you open up the, the path and stroke, we have these new options. We have taper and we have wave. This is where the magic's gonna happen. So the idea here is that we kind of want to bring our stroke to be the thickest part of the line. So I'm gonna find the thickest part and just bring the stroke up there, which is around here. And then we wanna look now, so the end part, we're gonna wanna taper this down. So let's look at the end here and start messing with these end segments. We'll bring the width down a bit. Okay, and now let's mess with the width here so we can kinda of, kind of get rounded out like that. I mean, that's looking really nice. We can mess with the ease and that kind of flattens it. That's not what we want, but we could do it if we wanted to. And we'll make the width a little bit smaller, more exaggerated like that. Bring the, the length even more in. And you know, we might not be able to get this exactly right, but I think we just kind of want to pay respects to our font. You know, this font was created by a professional. We are not the professional font creators. Maybe you are, but I'm not. So I'm just going to try to get this as close as possible, something that looks good. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's turn off our guide. You know, I think it looks pretty good. It's a little bit janky right there. And this curve, let's, let's get that going. And you know, that looks pretty good to me. So now what we can do is we can add a trim paths on here like this. See it's starting to draw in. And it's even drawing in with that nice taper action and it like morphs in kind of blobulous. If that's a word, it is now. But I want these to both trim paths in separately. So instead of having one trim path at the bottom, we want to duplicate this and have both of these segments have their own trim paths. Right? Right. So let's have the top part trim paths in, and then when it hits here, then the, the bottom part is going to start that trim path. And what should this easing look like? Well, I think we want it to start eased and end not eased for the top. And then the bottom will start linear. So like right here and then kind of end eased like this. And that looks pretty good. And then I think we could take this a step farther and do some interesting things like maybe edit the path that's happening. So this is where we can start to have some really big advantages now with this being a live path. So let's set some keyframes at the beginning and end of our path animation. So I'm going to set them there and at the end so that we can just retain the final shape. So at the end here, and I'll go ahead and preemptively ease these. We'll go back to the beginning. So when this is going to draw in, right, wouldn't it be cool going with the shape of the motion if maybe this kind of feels like it kind of flies in like that, right? I mean, that's kind of cool. And maybe the, the, this part also wants to follow that a little bit. And same with this keyframe. They're going to kind of swoop in like this. And this is not going to look great. It's not going to be perfect right here. But you kind of get that idea. And maybe this part wants to extend a little bit. And this will shoot out kind of like that with, these, with this keyframe. And maybe we'll push these keyframes more out a little bit so, you can, so you'll actually see it when it's happening. I think that's those little touches are going to add so much more now to this. Okay. So now let's uh let's do another letter. Let's do a letter at the end of this word, the y. 
so I'm going to turn my guide back on and with nothing selected again I'll grab the pen tool and let's start drawing here so you remember you want to think about how is this going to be written on however you would write it naturally is the is the order that you're going to draw it so the Y is going to start from here and then start drawing this way bing bang boom okay so then I need to change this to a round join. And now like before, we kind of want to set this to our thickest point, which is probably like here. And let's take a look at our taper and our wave again. So our, well, our start length, we can maybe bring it down a little bit because we want to get this ease in, right? Because we want to make this kind of a flat top like that to kind of match this, that feeling. And let's bring our end length down a lot to really get that curve feeling good. Woo, look at that, that is nice. That's very good, very good. But also, we're, this one's more difficult because we have this really tight pull in here. So let's see what we can do about that. So that's where we're gonna get this other setting called wave, where you can if you set, turn this on, you can see that it kind of pushes these pulses through here. And if you change the wavelength, it changes how big they are. And you can move the phase through them. There's a secondary one, which is cycles, which you can change the number to choose how many of them there are. And you can do some pretty crazy stuff with that. So maybe the cycles is, is the one that we want. I don't think it is, so let's go back to pixels. And let's kind of see if we can get something closer to this shape by using this. And so I don't think this is exactly right here. I do think that it looks pretty cool. So let's turn it off. I do really like this Y anyway. It's not completely faithful like I was saying, but I'll take it. So again, let's animate this Y. And I'll call it Y for anyone who has OCD. And now let's add a trim path. So this is an ending le letter, right? This is gonna be at the end of our animation. So how does it need to play in with the F? Well, since the F is at the beginning, this is gonna have a heavy ease in, and then it's gonna shoot out, right? So when that, uh, when that one's done shooting out, I think we want the Y to have a nice ease in. And I put together this quick diagram and it would mimic how you might write something like this quickly. So we're going to ease the beginning and end of these heavily and then kind of speed through the word. And these middle letters might overlap by a frame or so. And then the, the first letter might kind of overlap this a little bit. So in my case, I'm actually kind of easing here too by a little bit because it's kind of slowly writing in and then it kind of this part extends over and this might be different depending on what your letter is but this is the general idea so we're going to start slow speed through and then end slow and have this kind of hang and have a nice little flourish there so let me know if this makes sense or if it doesn't make sense and you want me to explain it more but this is the idea and then we can do something nice with the path animation with maybe this part of the Y kind of drops in like that. And then maybe this part gets extended a little bit. So now let's animate out this Y. And we're just going to do the Y and why you ask, because this video can't be that long or else no one's going to watch it. So let's animate the start out and we'll go ahead a little bit and animate this out. Boom. So what we're going to do here, right, we want to keep this keyframe linear. And we want to ease this keyframe. So it's going to look like this, right? And that's going to slow out. And now we can add a path animation onto this too. 
make a keyframe here, make a keyframe here, make this one linear. We want these to kind of always match up with each other. And now let's kind of drag these out so it like shoots away like it's a trail piece. And if we were gonna go crazy, this would maybe could fly around the screen or something, All right? And now this is gonna look like it's flying away. And if I had more time, I would go into these the stroke effects and I would animate the, the taper so that this gets more rounded, you know? But I don't, I'm not gonna do that right now, okay? We're running out of time, we're running out of time. Well, that's where we're gonna end the video today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you wanna download this project file, or if you need links for any of these plugins and scripts used, everything will be in the description down below. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or concerns, and I hope that everyone is staying safe out there. And thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.